Welcome to using the terminal on Linux. I'm Philip with Brutal Python, and in this video course, I'll give you an introduction to the terminal. The terminal can be intimidating to work with, especially when you're used to working with graphical user interfaces. Even though you can do many of your day-to-day -day tasks on a computer with apps that contain a graphical user interface, you may need to open the terminal at some point when you're learning Python. And yeah, the terminal really is an important tool for you as a Python developer. But granted, at the beginning it's hard to figure out how to navigate this dark space. To show you how to get started using the terminal, I invited Gerane as a guest today. Gerane will get a bunch of tasks from me that he has to perform on the Linux terminal. He really has to perform all the tasks in the terminal, so there will be no mouse, you'll see no windows except the terminal window, but there will be files, there will be folders, and of course, there will be some Python in it as well. And here's what we'll tackle in this course. You'll learn how to open the terminal, how to create files and folders, how to navigate the file system, and then you'll learn how to show contents of files and how to edit, copy, and move them. And of course, you'll learn how to run Python files in the terminal. If this is your first encounter with the terminal and you're feeling a bit nervous right now, I promise you that Gerarne will do a wonderful job of explaining things to you. And even if you're already a seasoned terminal user, I promise that you'll learn a thing or two. But before we begin the conversation, let's get a bit of theory out of the way in the next lesson. This is a lesson to give you an introduction to some terms that are helpful to know when you're talking about the terminal. Of course, I didn't want to miss out the chance of calling these terms terminal terms. Early developers used computer terminals to interact with a central mainframe computer. These were devices with a keyboard and a screen or printer that would display computed output. The personal computers that you're using today contain a different architecture. Still, you can find a terminal application to interact with your computer on a basic level. These terminal applications are called terminal emulators. As the name suggests, they are emulating the computer terminal. However, nowadays when people talk about the terminal, they usually don't talk about the old school computer terminal, but terminal emulators. Same goes for this course. When we're talking about the terminal in this course, we're actually talking about the terminal emulator. There are two other terms that you might hear now and then in combination with the terminal. Command line interface and shell. Command line interfaces allow you to interact with an application or program through the terminal. You execute commands and see their output. A shell is a program that provides an interface with specific commands to you. To bring it all together, the shell provides the commands that you use in a command line interface and the terminal is the application you run to access the shell. And these were the terminal terms. But enough with the theory for now, let's hop into the main part of this course and do some work with the terminal. Okay, so here we now are on a Linux system and joining me is Gerne. Hello Gerne. Hi Philip, how's it going? Good. So I'm super excited to see how the terminal is used on Linux. But first of all, a question generally about Linux. When I read about Linux, like there are different distributions and do we have to be specific now which Linux we are on or is it more like a general thing how to use the terminal on Linux? I think everything we'll do today will work on more or less any Linux, any terminal. So that the main difference might be just a little bit how things look. And uh, what I'm running on is an Ubuntu. I think this is the 2004 uh, long time version. But definitely all the commands we're running will work on any Linux. And will probably even if you have something dating back to the early 90s, it should work there as well. That's perfect. So yeah, if you haven't updated since the early 90s, then this video <laughs> is still valid for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I also have a few tasks for you that I want you to perform. Cool. The most important one at the beginning is how to actually open the terminal on Linux. Right. And uh, just to demonstrate, we can do this almost by magic. Like this. Okay. What did you do there? Exactly. 
What I like to do, because I use the terminal a lot, is that I'll just have trained my fingers for the default shortcut, at least on Ubuntu, which is Control-Alt-T. So T for terminal. And uh, that just pops up a new terminal. So, so that kind of sits in my fingers, and it's something that I do quite a bit. Alternatively, there is a terminal here in the dock on the side, so you, you can kind of always find it. But it's, yeah, Control-Alt-T is a great way to work with it. Okay, awesome. Now that you have the terminal open, how do you know where in the terminal you are? Uh, right. There is a file system that you kind of need to be fairly aware of when working with the terminal. And by default, it kind of has this prompt right here. So what this is, it's kind of spelling out my name, uh, G-A Yella. At and Ducky is uh, the name of my computer. And then there's a small tilde right there. And that just actually points out where we are on the file system. So, so terminals kind of work with this uh, notion of a working directory. And when you run a command, it kind of applies to that directory. So at the moment, it's just my home directory. Okay. We could also just run a quick command to see this, uh, pwd, which means print working directory. And here it spells out a little bit more explicitly that this is my home directory. So you can see my username again right there. Okay, perfect. So the tilde sign shows you that's your home directory or your user directory to be more precise, right? Yeah. Okay. Before we keep going with this, because some of you might see that this is kind of small letters and um, that they kind of work fine when I'm just working on them on my own. But sometimes you want to present stuff like I guess I'm doing right now. And it's nice to show things a little bit bigger or maybe in different colors. So I'll just point out that the standard terminal on Linux comes with the option of adding profiles. There is the unnamed profile that kind of comes from default. And then here I have added a profile I just call real Python, which is a nicer thing for presentation. You can see it kind of changed colors a little bit and it increased the font size and things like this. Perfect. That's better for, for now. So that's a good view to start uh, the test now. You already showed with PWD, you can see where you are in the terminal. Usually that's the same for everyone, right? So unless you have customized your terminal in some way, you will always start in your user directory. Yes, that there are options to kind of start the terminal in different places. But typically, if you just open a terminal, it will be in your home directory. Okay, cool. So yeah, the first thing I want you to do is create a directory named pb underscore terminal. You can create it wherever you want, but it must be named pb terminal. <laughs> yeah. I've typed out mkdir, which is short for make directory. So that's how you create a new directory. And then we just add the name to it. And the way that commands work on the terminal like this is that you have the command, which is the mkdir part. And then that takes some uh, parameters. And those parameters you typically then just space out. So there's a space you can see right, right there. Perfect. And it probably worked because there was no error or something like that? Yes. So terminals tend to be quiet as long as everything is fine and not so quiet if things are not fine. So I think this one, if I try to create the same directory one more time, so now I just did arrow up to go back in history essentially and run it one more time, you can see that now it starts yelling at me. And when things start yelling at you, it usually means that something did not work fine. Okay, it, it said it didn't create a directory because it already exists. Exactly. Okay, so now that we have created this folder and you, you basically proved to me that it exists by uh, <laughs> trying to run the command again and your terminal was saying like, hey, it's already there. So now I want you to change into this directory. Yes, so we talked about how we're working with the active directory and at the moment, or the working directory, and at the moment, that's just my home directory. To change the active directory, we use cd, change directory. And then again, it needs a name. So I'll just type in pb terminal. Now we can see that the prompt here changed a little bit, telling me that I have moved into pb terminal inside of my home directory. Okay. So and if you're now running PWD again, we see the whole path where you are. Yep. Perfect. 
Okay, next, let's get a bit more Python specific. I want you to create a Python file, but without stepping out of the terminal. And the file should mm -hmm. be named uh, hello underscore terminal dot pi. Yes. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. I guess we can start with the most basic one, which is called touch. And we can figure out why it's called touch in a minute. But if I just type touch hello terminal dot pi, at least uh, we got no feedback. So it seems like it worked. We can have a look now in, inside of here, which, which files are available. Mm -hmm. So the, there's a command called ls, which I think is short for list. And here we can see that it lists out the name of this file that we just created. Okay, so that's the contents of the directory are listed now in the hello underscore terminal dot pi file is in the pb terminal directory. Exactly. Okay, so the touch command is kind of like the, the touch on your, you, you touch it on your hard drive or is there a history to this command? Yes, I guess let, let's start actually by increasing a little bit with the ls command. So we talked about so far that we sometimes want to have arguments to our commands. So like here we had make their pb terminal. We can also have options and typically they will start with the dash or minus sign like this. So this L here, that means long listing. So it gives me a little bit more information about the files. So instead of just pointing out the name here, this one has the name right here, but it also has the creation date. It has the size, which is currently empty. And it has my name because I'm the owner of this file. And over here is some access things essentially saying who is allowed to read this file. What this touch command does, or was actually designed to do, is to change the access time on a file. So we can see here, if I just say touch hello terminal one more time, that still works. And if I do ls minus l, you can see that this timestamp there has been updated. Okay, but now I have a question. If there would be some content in the hello terminal.py file already and you would run touch again, would you overwrite it? Like, would it be empty again or does it only modify the time? Touch only modifies the time, so it doesn't change the contents of it. What we're kind of seeing and it's kind of become a typical thing to do is to kind of abuse this command to create empty files. Because if the file doesn't exist, then it creates the empty file. Okay, gotcha. 